Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about taxonomy. So in our table of contents, taxonomy notes, page 53, and then page 54 is going to be taxonomy mnemonic. Go ahead and write that down. When you're ready, flip to page 53. <coughs> All right. So go ahead and label the top with taxonomy notes. So first of all, what's, what's taxonomy, right? Um, well, it's pretty straightforward, actually. It's the study of um, or the branch, I guess I should call it, of biology that is concerned with how we're grouping and classifying the organisms that we study. So this is pretty biology specific. We're studying life. So it's looking at all living things. And remember, we've been talking about living things in two categories, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Well, that's just the beginning. There's all kinds of ways we can start to draw parallels between uh, us and other organisms or other, other organisms and each other. Um, taxon literally kind of means like the rank or branch or classification of various components. So it's that's basically what it is. Okay, so let's write the definition better than I just worded it. Um, so taxonomy is the branch of biology. concerned with the grouping and naming, because names often have to do, especially scientific names, have to do with the characteristics of that organism. So uh, that is pretty important. Okay. One thing to note is that um, taxonomy, while it's a study of biology and anywhere in the world you can study taxonomy, there is a universal language to it. And the first people who created it really wanted that. They wanted scientists from around the world to be able to talk about the same organism because gato in Spanish and cat in English, that can be very confusing. But when you start studying it from the terms of scientific names and what's called binomial nomenclature, all of a sudden scientists can have these conversations about the very specific species of say bacteria or whatever it might be. So it, it opened up this whole world of possibilities, literally and figuratively. Um, taxonomy was first sort of introduced by a person named uh, Carolus, or Carolus, Carolus, I believe you say it, uh, Linnaeus. Um, he was a Swedish <clears throat> botanist, botanist studies uh, plants, botanist who um, developed a system of classification literally not a the it's what we use today the classification system we use to um Oh, create a common naming system for organisms. Let me read a Swedish botanist who developed the classification system. We use to create a common naming system for organisms. Hmm. I don't love that, but I think you get the point. Okay, not my best wording. 
Um, essentially, he was like, okay, so if I'm going to classify things, I should probably start with very general concepts um, and then kind of work my way to more specific details about each organism. So he, the way I like to draw it is the way it's been drawn is kind of like an upside down triangle. <laughs> each layer is called a taxon, taxonomy. See what we did there? Um, and this is the system of classification that he created. And you know more about this than you probably realize. Um, the first layer was actually, which is the, the least specific, um, is actually called domain. Now, here's the thing about domain. It was not added at this time. Uh, this is this was added later because the discovery of uh, like using the microscope to find structures within cells and how that's all broken down didn't come until later. So you may recognize our domain that we're in, which is called eukarya. Sound familiar? eukaryotic eukaryotes uh, we're in the, that's very general right we we have cells that have nuclei cool that's how specific it is that's it there's only three domains eukarya bacteria and archaea and we're in eukarya so in parentheses i'm going to be putting where we fall into this system <laughs> now within that carolus um said, okay, well, there's all these kingdoms of life. And I think he came up with six. Uh, we fall into the animal kingdom. You've probably heard that before. Uh, also called animalia. Okay, that's where we are. Then he got even more specific and he's like, okay, so these are animals. They're able to, that, that has to do with are they able to move on their own? So these have cells with nuclei. Everything that's in the kingdom animalia can move on its own, as opposed to like plant eye, which plants can't. Um, they can respond to stimuli, but they're not gonna get up and walk away. Then he's like, okay, what's more specific than that? He called it a phylum, P-H, the phone, phylum. And he put us in phylum chordata. Now he's getting more specific here. And he's like, okay, so these would be animals that have like backbones or spines. Um, so for example, if a snake is here, it's not gonna be here. Okay. It's like, okay, more specific than that. But now we're still, there's still thousands of species. So it's like, let's call it class. And for humans, he put, we are in mammalia. AKA mammals, you may have heard of. And that is more, has to do with animals that have um, fur or hair um, and they have milk glands. So their they're young feed from milk glands. Um, <laughs> Still, that's a lot. There's a lot of mammals, a lot of animals considered mammals. So we actually, looking at a dog or a rabbit or a deer, we're so far, we're all in the same Eukarya, Animalia, Chordata, Mammalia. We're in the same domain kingdom phylum class. That's because it's not that specific yet. We're getting more and more specific. So the next level, and each one of these has multiple layers and levels that, that something could go into. Um, the next one was order. Order is for us, we're primates. Primates are mammals with collarbones and grasping fingers. Um, more specific yet again. And then there's family. 
And we are in the family hominid. Which I don't know if that'll fit here, but I'm gonna try. Hominid or hominidae. Hominid hominidae, hominidae. It's hard to say the Latin version of that. Um, hominid. Hominids are primates that have kind of flat faces as opposed to like snouts or something and three-dimensional vision. Pretty, pretty specific at this point. Then there's genus. Now I'm going to draw an arrow because it's not going to fit, but we are in, you've heard it. I know you've heard this one. We're in the genus Homo. Just like our lovely uh, monkeys and apes and chimpanzees. Um, Homo is simply talking about any kind of hominid that it, it stands upright in posture and has larger um, you probably guessed it already. This next one is species. Now, ours is sapien. It's very specific. We are Homo sapiens. You probably heard that before. Oh, that had blown your mind. Uh, there's more room. There's things called subspecies, and that's because, um, like, I think about a dog. Dogs, there's tons of subspecies of dogs, um, but they're all part of the same genus and species. Um, and I think it's a canine familiaris. So I think they're a genus and species, but but within that they have a sub lot many subspecies. Uh, so do lots of other things. Humans, not so much. But Homo sapien, you've probably heard that. Now these two. That's where the naming system comes from. So if two scientists from different parts of the world are talking about a species, they're going to talk about it in terms of their genus and species. They're gonna, they're gonna say Homo sapien. And once you know the genus and species, it's easy to figure out what the rest are based on that. So that's kind of the naming system. Um, each level, I'm gonna make a little note here. Each level is more specific. fact, species comes from the word specific. Genus comes from more general. So it goes from actually really, really generic to very specific. Uh, and we could take any bacteria, we could take any um, animal, plant, anything, reptile, doesn't matter what it is. And there's a domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus that it would fit into and species, um, which is pretty neat. And so that's all universal. There might be some slight adjustments here and there, but for the most part, it's universal. The system of naming is called binomial nomenclature. Um, it's kind of a really redundant wording that means by means two nom is from the word name to name name so <laughs> to name naming system is kind of if you broke it down uh by nomial nomen and clature to name naming system and that has to do with the genus and species so this is the classification system that uses two names to identify an organism. So let's say, for example, the common name when Darwin was studying his finches, the common name is finch, right? But he discovered, okay, there's all of these subtle differences depending on where this 
organism lives. And so if this system had existed, he could have learned or even named them if he discovered them. Uh, he could have gone, okay, well, he said, okay, they're Eukarya, they're Animalia, and then he could have gone down and figured it out and then gotten down to genus maybe and it's like, okay, they're, they're all in the same genus, but then he could start individually naming each species based on, <clears throat> usually it's a Latin based system name you, and often it's based on characteristics of that organism. And so he could have named each of those finches something slightly different and would have been able to refer to them in that way. <laughs> so one thing to note, hope you still have room for binomial nomenclature is that formatting is important in how you actually write the word. So, or the two names. So we know it's always going to be genus plus species. Two scientists are talking, they're going to refer to something with the genus and the species. Uh, here, you know, we've already referred to us as an example, but if I were to write Homo sapien, I would need to italicize it, which means slant it. So I'm going to write it slightly slanted, italicized, Homo, capital H, sapien, still italicized, but lowercase. That's correct. So italicized, which just means like slanted to the side, kind of like when you write cursive. Um, genus is capitalized. Species is lowercase. Okay. So it doesn't really matter what I'm talking about. If you're talking about Canis familiaris, I would do Canis, capital C, familiaris, lowercase f, and they would all be italicized. And Canis is a whole genus with shared traits, and then familiaris is a species, very specific. Uh, species is usually reserved for organisms that can mate with one another, that can actually reproduce, reproduce amongst each other. Uh, it is possible to have subspecies that might prevent that. So dogs, there's certain subspecies of dogs that would have a really hard time reproducing. I think you can infer from there. Um, but for the most part, some point in that lineage, they were um, able to reproduce together. Okay, so that is taxonomy notes. That was a lot of information. I hope that stuck. Uh, moving over to the right side. Now, I love mnemonics. Um, it's so, I don't know why I enjoy creating them, but this is a tactic that if I don't tell you to do it, you can still do it. Some people have not been doing this correctly in their notebooks. They've been taking any kind of notes and trying to turn it into a sentence, it does not work that way. Mnemonics are something that's gonna help you remember. And typically <laughs> it's best if it's something that's like a specific order that you have to go in. Like, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally for order of operations. It's a specific order that something has to go in. So it makes sense. Or I prefer milk and tasty cookies for the steps of mitosis. This is the same thing, except I'm going to have you create the mnemonic. So we've got DKPCOFGS, which stands for what we just talked about, the system of classification, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. This system, you're going to come up with just a sentence, a complete sentence um, that starts each letter starts with the letter over here. So does King Philip blah, 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 blah. Okay, and you would write the sentence down here. Now, I also recommend in addition to writing your sentence that each starts with the letter of the taxon, that you might over here draw a picture that represents your silly mnemonic. 
So if it ends up being about King Philip, um, I might draw out a picture of the King, King Philip doing something. Okay, so this is your going to be your sentence. One word on each line that starts with this letter. Make it try as best as you can to make it make grammatical sense, uh, which does take practice and work. It's hard. Draw a picture. Um, you can draw it here. If you don't have enough room, you can also just draw it down here. Now, I personally would recommend that each class shares theirs and votes and comes up with one mnemonic that you use, period, to remember it. You don't have to do that, but that has always been a very fun activity. And we even create, I even in the past have created uh, like, not sign language, but a, a motion that goes with each word. Uh, and that's kind of fun and we all learn it together. And then the kids don't usually forget it for many, many, many years or maybe ever because it's stuck in their head, whether they want it to be or not. Okay, so you can either draw your picture here or you can draw below, either way. If you have a lot of fun with this and you wanna come up with a few, go for it. Um, that is really it, that's not a lot of output. So hope you have fun with it and see you later.